One of the priorities we've set for my office has been to investigate, charge if appropriate, and take to trial if appropriate uh, a number of cold case homicides that we've had in Boulder. Uh, we've had uh, uh, three, three significant trials and several other convictions of cold cases, including the Alcalde case, uh, the Elmar case, and recently the Michael Clark homicide. All of those cases were more than 10 years old by the time we took them to trial. And I think what the community needs to know about these cases is that the staff in my office who prepare the case, put it together and take it to trial, work very, very hard. It's really a labor uh, that requires them to work around the clock on weekends, putting everything together and taking it forward and presenting the evidence in court. We have very strict standards that we have for reviewing the evidence and making sure it's sufficient before we go to trial. And ultimately, we want to make sure we take as many of these cases as we can to, the, to a jury and let a jury ultimately make the decision about guilt or innocence. You know, there's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of different challenges with cold case prosecution. Um, just the fact that the case is old makes it, it creates a certain number of issues. You've got to track down witnesses on the Clark case. We had a number of witnesses we had to find, locate, interview, re-interview, and then bring in to testify. Also, um, you know, you deal with the fact that people's uh, recollections uh, uh, fade with time and so you have to come in and deal with what they remember at this point, maybe uh, slightly different than what they remembered back at the time of the crime. One of the good things about uh, taking your time and putting together a homicide case is that forensic science is always improving and uh, in increased capacity to do DNA testing and other things that can be helpful can help make a case stronger. Certainly some of that was a factor in the Clark case. But the bottom line is uh, I understand these cases are important to the community. We want to make resolving them a priority, and I've got a great staff that does a great job of putting the cases together and taking them to trial. Every case will continue to be reviewed. Any new evidence will be reviewed. We never close the book on any homicide case. Um, but our process is quite rigorous, and it involves several different layers of review of the evidence. Ultimately, I'm the one that makes the decision about whether the evidence is sufficient to file the charge and take it forward. Uh, but before it gets to me, it goes through a number of levels of investigators, other deputy district attorneys, usually the police are involved, and then chief deputies and my assistant, uh, Ryan Brackley. So we try to um, make sure that there's been rigorous review of the case before we take it to court. In a prosecutor's office, you are constantly uh, making practical decisions about where you're going to put the resources in a case or where you're going to put the resources in the office. Um, we have four main priorities in my office, violent crime, serious economic crime, serious drug dealing, and public corruption. Those are cases that are top priority. Obviously, a homicide case is a violent crime case. It's a top priority. Um, we, you know, our primary limitations in terms of how much work we put into a case are tied to our ethical standards of making certain that we have enough evidence um, we, we will never file a case unless uh, the, the evidence is sufficient to meet our ethical standard that we have a, a reasonable likelihood of conviction unanimously by a jury of 12. So if we don't have that, it, you know, an example is the Ramsey case. Ramsey case, the state of the evidence at this point is such that um, uh, there's not a lot of work going on in that case. Um, if evidence developed that led us to think we might be able to file a case, we'd make it a top priority. But if you don't have the evidence or the evidence is equivocal and it can't, it's not leading anywhere, we're not going to put the resources in it. If we do have evidence and we think we can develop it, we'll put a lot of resources into it. You know, in our job, we deal with crime victims and uh, um, the impact on a family of lo losing a loved one through a violent crime is, is uh, devastating. There's a ripple effect throughout the family and the community. So it's satisfying um, in any of these cases when we can bring them to a just result.